When the raw build community was polled, what do you prefer? 52% of you said you prefer when I get right into the content. Too bad, because I got a pretty funny intro coming your way. Impressions, impressions. Wow, slow, wow. John Mulaney. Hi, I'm John Mulaney. Peter McKinnon. What's up, everybody? Hey, Grams, what's up? It's Guys here. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of think that's pretty good. Well, I'll never get those 29 minutes back, so... Hi everybody and welcome to the third installment of my Airbnb series going on all this month. We've talked about what Airbnb is, the five different Airbnb business models that you can get started with, and today I'm really excited. I'm really excited to talk about how to set up your Airbnb business from start to finish. I feel like I talk quite a bit about Airbnb strategies, how much money I make, but I really wanted to boil it down as simple as possible and just take you through the process. So I'm going to take you on the journey and teach you as best as I can, but before we get into it, if this video inspired you to become an Airbnb host, consider signing up with my link down below. When you do, you'll get a $75 bonus when you host your first day, and I'll be assigned as your Airbnb ambassador, which I kind of think is a neat thing because I'll be able to give you some direct feedback on your first listing. So go sign up, and while you're down there, consider just mm, <laughs> the like button. You know what I mean? With that, let's get into it. So I'm gonna take you through all the steps. I'm gonna kind of glaze through one and two here because I have entire videos dedicated to these steps. But step one is really gonna be deciding on your unit type. Are you gonna buy? Are you gonna lease? And if you are gonna buy, what are you gonna buy? Are you gonna buy a house, a townhome, a condo, a house hack? Or do you wanna go into the glamping space and do vintage Airstreams, tiny houses on wheels, tiny A-frames, Mongolian huts, spaceships, potatoes, and everything in between. And there's also rental arbitrage where you lease a place and then you release it on Airbnb. My last video, Hello me. Really details every unit type and business model, so be sure to check that out. But you wanna decide exactly what you wanna do first and pretty early on because it's really gonna inform your strategy and the process moving forward. Once you've sort of figured out if you're gonna lease, buy, and what you're gonna buy and all that kind of stuff, you now have to decide the location. Where exactly are you gonna be investing? Where are you gonna be starting your Airbnb portfolio? Now again, I do have an entire video on this that teaches you how to comp out a short-term rental deal, how to analyze it, so check that out. Watch it after this video, because I've already got you here. <laughs> and I'll let you leave. When deciding where I'm gonna set up shop, I always adhere to a very simple acronym, SIBI, stay in your backyard. <laughs> Obviously, just kidding, not a real acronym, but staying in your backyard is very important to me. What I mean by this is stay anywhere from one to three hours away from where you live when you're first starting out. Now, if you're already a relatively seasoned real estate investor and you're pretty confident that you can handle an out-of-state Airbnb rental, then I always recommend to be by national parks, state parks, touristy cities, or destination towns. When I say touristy cities, I mean like LA or Orlando. And then when I say destination towns, I mean lake towns, ski towns, mountain towns, beach cities, and places like that. But Civi, staying in your backyard, basically allows you to check in on your property because you're a few hours away, and it just allows you to get there on a weekend to actually enjoy your property because, again, it is a vacation rental for a reason. You should be able to use it and enjoy it. But it's far enough away to where it's incredibly inconvenient for you to get to in case of emergency, so it sort of forces you to build and assemble your team on the ground that can handle all of that for you. So there's a little bit of a method to the madness here. TLDW, be close enough to where you can get there if you really, really need to in case of emergency or on a weekend, but far enough away to where it's inconvenient enough for you to hire someone else to go address things on the ground for you. And now we're cooking with gas. Step number three here is actually acquire your property. Whether you're gonna buy it or you're gonna lease it, this is your time to go through your due diligence, run all your inspections. This is gonna be your time to negotiate with the landlord if you're gonna be doing the rental arbitrage model. And if you're buying a place once you close, this is your time to fix it up, to maintain it, to repair it, to paint the walls, to get it squeaky clean and spark for your first guest. Take it from me, this is your time to get it right the first time. None of this, oh yeah, let's get it together and then in like three months we'll come in and we'll remodel the bathroom or in six months we'll come in and we'll do all these things that we don't wanna do right now we'll kind of work up to it. I'll tell you what, from experience, once you start an Airbnb and it's established and it's running and it's cash flowing and people are booking and people are reviewing you and having a relatively good time there, it's very difficult to go in and do all those things that you promised you would do when you first bought the place for a few reasons. One being you get lazy. If people are already booking your place and you're making money, why would you change anything, right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Another really important reason is that if you actually do have a successful listing and it's completely booked up for, let's say, one or two months in advance, then it's pretty tough to block off dates because it's always booked and you can never actually get in for a remodel. And lastly, if you do ever shut down your place to go and fix it up and paint walls and change curtain rods and change flooring and whatever, you're gonna be stopping your cash flow dead in its tracks. Now, I know you might be saying, well, if we did this at the beginning, wouldn't we be stopping 
stopping our cash flow too, Rob? Kind of, yeah, but think about it this way. Whenever you buy a property, typically, you have about a month or two before your first mortgage is due, so cash flow is a little less important at that time, which is why I always say, when you buy your place and when you acquire it, do everything that you wanna do right then. Just rip the Band-Aid off, get it over with, and never think about it again. So you've acquired your property, you fixed it up, you painted the walls, you made it all nice and cute. What next, Rob? Simple, you furnish it. Wow, what knowledge bombs you bring to us, Sensei! Yeah, here's the deal. A lot of us get so in our head about starting an Airbnb rental. There are so many of you that comment and send me DMs and like, I don't know what to do, like where do I start? How do I do? Friends, there's no need to overthink this. It really is a simple process. There are obviously more advanced strategies here, but it really is a linear process. So we're gonna furnish your unit and you're gonna decide on what kind of style you want. Do you want it to be a boho chic style? Do you want it to be a mid-century style? Do you want it to be a rustic style? Do you want it to be a, a Swedish minimalist? style. You've got a CIFUB. Set your furniture budget. <laughs> I am on fire with these acronyms. You gotta decide how much you want to spend and you really have to decide here, is your Airbnb or short-term rental going to be a premium experience or is it going to be a budget experience? Now I always say pick one. I don't really like to be in the middle for a lot of reasons. I think it's just there's a lot of clutter there. I think it's not easy to stand apart. Or at least with the budget strategy you can set yourself apart with pricing. And on the luxury and premium side of things you can set yourself apart by being significantly nicer than the competition. So decide on a furniture palette. I would try your best not to mix and match too many styles. Do I have a, like a Superman curl going here? Okay. You know, it's it's a delicate ecosystem, all right? Leave me alone. On the flip side of this, you also don't want to be too matchy-matchy. Meaning I think it's nice to combine a couple of styles to juxtapose styles that don't normally go together. Like I have a mid-century modern house that we just bought and it's very cabiny on the inside. So we really brought rustic and mid-century modern together. I also have another cabin on the East Coast that's very cabiny from the architectural standpoint, but I didn't want to just go full cabin and bare and rustic on the inside, so we went more for a bohemian cabin type of vibe. Regardless, first you have to sifaba, and then once you sifaba, then you can decide on the interior design style that fits you. Now honestly, in my opinion, furnishing your space is typically the hardest part of an Airbnb setup. Like I think if you can get through buying a house and closing and doing all the inspections and the due diligence, then you can furnish your place and go through all the riffraff of ordering everything and going to Marshalls and Target and Ikea and Costco plus and home goods and all that stuff. If you can get through all of that, you've made it through the hard part. Cause honestly, I think the hosting part is easy. I mean, it comes easier to me. It's harder for other people, but whenever you're furnishing your place, it just requires so much of your mental brain space, but it requires so much of your mental capacity to just keep track of receipts and costs and which credit card to use and where to buy a can opener versus a toaster. I've actually been contemplating making a full on video that tells you where to buy every single item, but I feel like that would be too boring. If that's something you'd wanna see, I guess let me know down below. And as always, if enough of y'all want that video, of course I'll make it. So when it actually comes to furnishing your place, I think the reason it's so hard is because it just takes so much planning. And it can be significantly more planning if you're buying an out of state or an out of town rental. Because if you're buying something in your backyard, for example, one to three hours away, or even in your same city, you can always mail stuff to your house. You can always mail furniture to your house, load it up in a truck or U-Haul and drive over. But if you buy something 2000 miles away, like a lot of my different Airbnb properties that I've set up, then it gets a little bit tougher because you have to plan out delivery times. You have to make sure that the different furniture items and the different couches and the different side tables and all those different vendors that you're buying from can actually ship to your address on time. Right now, due to COVID and all the different supply chain issues, delivery time's not really working out right now. Caleb, I have full faith that you're gonna hook us up with a funny, witty B-roll that connects perfectly to that last statement. And I feel like you're just gonna delay and delay and delay. If you're setting up an Airbnb in your backyard one to three hours away, give yourself a week. Give yourself a solid week of setting it up. That's gonna give you some buffer to go back and forth to kind of take it slow and fill up your house little by little every single day. If you're buying a place really far away, out of state for example, then I wanna say that you wanna give yourself at least two weeks. You wanna go and stay there for two weeks. You wanna ship as much as you can beforehand either to your house or maybe a friend in that town or maybe your realtor for example. And you wanna go and you wanna live there and set everything up and give yourself time to go find different stores. A lot of the different towns and cities that I'm in don't necessarily have a West Elm or a Cost Plus or a Costco. So we oftentimes have to drive really far away, one to three hours away to go stock up on supplies and then go back to our house to actually furnish it. And then we're like, oh my God, we forgot the toilet paper. Oh no! 
And then we have to th drive three hours again to go back to Costco. So you wanna plan for a lot of road time and that's why I say two weeks is usually gonna help you get it done. Again, if you get through the furnishing part, congratulations, you made it through what I think is probably the hardest part. Next, you're gonna make a listing. But before you make that listing, sign up with my link down below and you'll get $75 whenever you host your first day. Cause that's a cool thing that you can do. And I just realized this, I also have a full on video that teaches you how to write your listing, craft the copy and all that jazz. So when you're ready to make a listing, check out that video. And you can also download my <sighs> top five listing tips down in the description below. I think this is gonna be one of your more important steps here because a lot of people really mail in their listings. They'll take cell phone photos of their beautiful homes. They'll give you a one or two word headline for their listing. They'll give you one to two sentences in the about the space section and they really just don't do a good job marketing and promoting their own Airbnb listing. So this is your opportunity to stand out. A lot of people come to me and ask, Rob, how do I market my place? What do I do? And my answer is always the same. Put everything you have into your listing and make it as good as possible. That's what's gonna make you stand out from the competition. So hire a professional photographer to come out after you fully furnished your place, write a really nice snappy headline, blow out all of your listing copy to be somewhat of a mini blog or a mini essay, romance me a bit with your words, and really make your listing pop. In fact, if you're an Airbnb host and you're really proud of your listing, leave it down in the description below and maybe I'll review it in a video sometime if you wanna be put on blast in front of 111,000 people. <sighs> Um, so I'm so happy guys. You know, ever since I hit 100,000 subscribers, I'm still not over it. It still makes me smile. And I just want to say thanks. Thanks for being a friend, y'all. Mud. Anyway, if you're new to the channel, this is me, a big ADHD goofball. And I guess since we're here, if you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing and hitting the little notification bell so that you're alerted anytime I post new Airbnb content. Speaking of friends, send a friend to your listing. At this point, you've set it up, you've created a listing. Now let a friend go and stay there and let them give you honest feedback on your place. Whenever this is possible, this is definitely something that I'll opt into because I think your friend can give you the honest hot takes about your place. And if you can't get a friend to go out, then I think you need to go and stay at your place but you need to set it up get it clean get it staged and get it ready as if it were going to be an Airbnb guest then you need to go and stay there overnight and try to do things that an Airbnb guest might do in your own house try cooking a meal and see if you're missing utensils try taking a shower in every bathroom so that you can confirm that the water pressure is good try going into one of your closets and screaming as loud as possible to see if any of your neighbors would possibly hear it and if they don't then maybe go into your backyard and dig a hole that's three feet by six feet just to see how soft that soil is and if any of your neighbors would ever notice that just in case you needed to dispose of something in the middle of the night like paper plates or something but either way, you're doing what's called a soft launch. You're just going in, tweaking a few things, living the guest experience, ironing out any final wrinkles. Okay, I'm watching this. <laughs> I, hate, I hate that so much. No. Because the more that you do beforehand, the less likely that something's gonna go wrong when your first set of guests come and check in and you really want them to leave you a five-star review because your first set of reviews are by far the most important. Alrighty, you feeling good? You feeling like you got this? Hopefully I'm boiling this down as simple as possible. But let's move forward here into the next step, which is assembling what I call your Airbnb Avengers. Now these are gonna be the people that are really running your property because you're not necessarily gonna live nearby. Your Airbnb Avengers are gonna be made up of your cleaning crew, your handyman, your pest control service, your lawn maintenance, and a contractor. In theory, these are all the people that you're gonna need to help run your property. Now, there are a few exceptions here. If you buy a place with a hot tub or a pool, you might need a pool maintenance person to come and perform maintenance every so often. But for most standard rentals, these five people do the trick. Now, I would argue that the most important Avenger here is gonna be your cleaning crew. These are gonna be the lifeblood of your operation. They're gonna be the ones that are telling you if something is broken by a guest, something needs to be repaired, if something needs to be replaced, if something needs to be restocked, you know, all those types of things. So in a way, your cleaning crew is kind of like your unofficial property manager because they're the ones that are cluing you in on the condition of your property. And they're a lot cheaper than paying a property manager that's gonna charge you anywhere from 15 to 30% of gross revenue for short-term rentals. Now for the most part, everyone else, your handyman, your contractor, pest control, and lawn service, those can be sourced as you go. I wouldn't put it off too long. You need a pest control person to make sure that there aren't any bugs in your place. You need a lawn person to make sure that your grass isn't overgrown. And then you need a, a handyman on call just in case anything breaks down. But for the most part, you have a little bit of time here. You have anywhere from one to four weeks to source these different crew members. 
But you have to find your cleaner before you go live because if you have a guest check-in, someone needs to turn the apartment or the house for the next guest. Because if that next guest checks in and it's dirty, guess what? You're leaving them a refund. So you're gonna need a cleaner. You just can't operate the actual business without having a cleaner and then hopefully maybe a backup cleaner too. Let's move. Really this step is probably the most important step in making sure that your Airbnb is running as a smoothly oiled machine. <laughs> no, that's not how that goes. A well-oiled machine, or as I like to call it, a WOM. I'm on it tonight, I'm on it tonight. And one final note here, and I personally think it's a very important one. Don't skimp out from a pay rate standpoint. Like pay people what they deserve. Don't go with the cheapest handyman or cleaner or pest control service, because guess what? They're probably not gonna crush it for you. That doesn't necessarily mean to go with the most expensive one, just don't go with the cheapest. Because you do get what you pay for. So you know, just be like a good person and stuff. Caleb, let's let's shake it up a little bit. Let's make this cinematic, all right? Give me like the little, maybe the, Yep, I like this coloring, very nice. And let's talk about the next step. Learn the business, be in the business. A lot of people wanna toss their Airbnbs over to a management company, and I just don't really support this whenever you're first starting out your Airbnb journey. I just don't personally think that it's worth it. I think that there are cheaper routes that you can go because a short-term rental management company is gonna charge you between 15 to 30% of your gross monthly revenue. Now, I'm sure you can still make a pretty decent return here, but regardless, no matter if you decide to toss this over to a property management company down the road, I think that you really need to be the one to learn the business first. I think you need to understand how Airbnb works, how you want to respond to people, when you want to refund people, when you want to stand your ground, when you want to have a heart, how you want to respond to broken items, and you want to set your own personal policies instead of just handing it off to a company. Because then you can at least have your own opinions formed and maybe you can collaborate on some of those policies with the property management company if you ever decide to go that route. But before you ever go down the property management route and before you ever think about giving up your Airbnb, I want you to learn the business, I want you to love the business, I want you to master the business, and I want you to be profitable at the business, or as I like to call it, limp. And the best way to learn and master this business is just by doing it. It's by being in the weeds and running the daily operations yourself. And the other way that you can learn this business is by absolutely, and I mean just absolutely decimating that subscribe button down below so that you get more content from me about how to Airbnb and how to run your Airbnb business. Shameless plug, shameless plug, shameless plug, shameless plug. Thank you, thank you. It's the way you look that's putting us off. I don't know what you're gonna do with that, but it'd be very embarrassing if you did nothing with that. So this is really gonna be where the learning curve comes in, and I'm just gonna say that you can watch as many of my videos as possible, you can read all the books and consume all the YouTube content, and you're gonna have a general understanding of how to do all of this stuff, but you're not really gonna know how to do it. You know what I mean? You're not gonna know how to do it until you live it and you experience it as an Airbnb host. So embrace the opportunity to learn the business, because you only get to do this once. And I'm gonna say that my first year of Airbnb hosting was one of like my happiest years hosting. Like I was new to it. I wasn't nearly as jaded. I was making money. It was exciting. I was getting thousand dollar bookings or a two thousand dollar booking. There's so many celebrations and there's so many heartbreaks and heartaches and I just wouldn't take it back for anything in the world because those were the experiences that shaped me. So look forward to this process and love it for what it is because in a couple years from now you're gonna have a few Airbnbs and you're gonna think back and you're gonna say wow that first year as an Airbnb host I learned so much. I accomplished so much more than I ever thought I could ever accomplish and I built something special. That's gonna be a cool moment for you when that happens. All right, I'm gonna change the camera angle here. <laughs> A little peek behind the curtain. Usually it's pretty seamless. Is this crooked? I don't know. What I do know is it's 113. Uh, nine, I don't really know if we're keeping track of the steps here, but the one of the last steps here is you're gonna automate your business. So in the previous step, I said to learn it. Be in the weeds, understand how your business works, but then you need to start taking note of all the different tasks that are eating into your day. And then you have to ask yourself, how can I automate this? So there are a few ways to automate your Airbnb business, and I did a video on this about a year ago, so check that out after this video. But here's the gist of all the things that you can automate. First, you're gonna wanna automate your messaging. So instead of responding to people every single day and responding to every single message and sending out a welcome message and a check-in and a checkout message manually, which could easily frazzle you if you have more than two listings, you can automate all of your messages like platforms like Your Porter, Smart BNB, which I now think is called Hospitality, and IGMS. And you can actually set automation so that whenever someone books a place, they get an automatic message. Before someone checks in, you send them an automatic message. The day after they've 
they've checked in, you follow up and you make sure everything's okay, you can automate that. The checkout message, hey, make sure to clean everything up, put dirty towels in the tub, take off all bed linens, blah, blah, blah. You can automate that and you can even automate asking for a review and even leaving the review. An AI can do that for you. <laughs> it's crazy what you can hire robots to do. You can also automate your cleaning. Instead of texting your cleaning crew every single time that a guest is checking in and a guest is checking out, instead of saying, hey, I got a reservation on this day, hey, I got another reservation, and scheduling them every single day, again, you can get so lost in these details if you have more than two listings. Even just one listing, if you have a listing like Casa Conejo that's booked like every single day, and those stays are one to three night stays, it would just, I would lose my mind if I had to actually schedule that with my cleaners. There are different platforms that can help you with this, such as resort cleaning, or your porter, I use your porter, and it makes it very simple. It sends out text messages to all of my cleaners on the check-in date, on the checkout date, and then every single time I get a new reservation, it tells my cleaners how many people are gonna be staying there so they know how many towels and sheets to provide and all that kind of stuff. So this tool right here has really made things pretty easy for me. You can also automate things like your pricing. If you're in a low season or in a high season, services like Price Labs or Beyond Pricing can adjust your pricing on your calendar and give you that optimal price point depending on the market supply and demand on any given day. I personally use Price Labs. I would highly recommend them. If you want $10 off, which is basically a free month, you can sign up with my link down below. And guess what? I'll also get $10. So you scratcheth my back and I'll scratcheth your back. No idea what accent that was. Old English meets Mexican? Not, I don't know. Before you all fire up the old fingers for the comments, I'm Mexican, okay? Calm down. And lastly, you can automate check-in. You can get things like a ring doorbell, a ring floodlight so that you can check in on your place, but you can also get a smart keypad that you can control from your phone because we're addicted to our phones and so why not just add door locks to that? Why not? Why don't we just let smart technology just take over everything for us? I use a Nest Yale lock. I'll leave it down in the description below. There's also the Slage or the Slage. Honestly, I've never heard it said out loud, but there's a Slage on code which syncs up with your porter and your porter will actually change out the combination for every single guest and change that combo to the last four numbers of their phone number. Now that is cool. I haven't gotten to use it yet, but I really want to on my next Airbnb. And last step, and perhaps the best step, is just to make money. Make money, folks. And here's the hot take of the day, and I'll end it here. I'll end with a piping hot take. Don't spend your money. I, I think a lot of people, you know, they get carried away and they're like, oh my God, I've never made this kind of money before, and, and they spend it. You know, whenever I first started my Airbnb business, I'll be honest, me and my wife, we spent a lot of the money that we made traveling, and I would never take that for the world. But I quickly learned that it was also really cool to just stack up you know money in my bank account and let it accrue for a year and then decide what I wanted to do with it and so I think that if you're starting your Airbnb business and you want to expand and you want to grow and you see yourself wanting to do this as a career and you see a future in this then you can't spend your money you really can't you have to just keep saving it and saving it so that you can get into that next property and then when you're in that next property you need to save all that money along with your first property and you use that money to go and reinvest when I started this journey four months ago I had nothing I truly had nothing except for about $100,000 of debt. Somebody please smack me. Unbelievable. And fast forward to today, and I have 14 different Airbnbs, and after all my expenses and bills and partnership splits and everything like that, I'm making about $25,000 a month net. And it's always because I reinvested in my portfolio. And hopefully in a year from now, I can double that. So start small, save, invest, don't spend. I know it's hard, but I promise you it's gonna be worth it. That $25,000 a month figure, uh-oh, <laughs> lights are off. Okay, I'm gonna end it, I'm, that's a sign. That $25,000 figure that I gave you just barely happened like now. Not too long ago because I'm a part of a few deals that I actually just started getting paid from after being in these deals for a very very long time and it feels good to see this spider web that's been building very slowly from all sides like finally come together and I'm like oh, I did it after four years I'm making a really 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 great income from Airbnb and I guess I'll just end here I really believe that if I could do it you can do it too I promise. Hopefully today's video, I was able to break it down very simply for you. And hopefully you're like a little nervous, but like you're excited nervous because you're like, okay, I think I can do this. I'm gonna do this. And you are, I really believe that. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And you're definitely gonna wanna tune into my final video in the series here that talks about all the things that I wish I knew about Airbnb hosting before I got into the business. I think it's gonna be a good one and an important watch. So thanks again for watching. If you made it this far, you get the special designation of super fan. Let me know you're a super fan down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next episode of Raw Build. Oh.